Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel today, Armor Studio NYC. As you can tell, we're going to be building a Tamiya 135 Russian KV-1. This Tamiya kit has been sitting in my stash for a little while, and I figured now that I probably have some better techniques, I can finally do this model in a way that I think I can do it some justice. So let's see what's inside of our box of our chonky boy from Russia here. So this first little pamphlet is our painting guide and as well as our decal guide and this is going to be our instruction booklet. As always, to me a very clear, precise instructions. A uh, few various parts, link and length tracks, which are going to look really, really good because the KV-1 does have sagging tracks. This video may not have that much voice simply because it's just a build video. So. I'll just give you some extra little tips and advice, maybe a little bit of tidbits along the way. We're going to be using two different types of cement here. We're going to be using our Tamiya Extra Thin, as always, and our Tamiya Regular Cement for the heavier parts. One thing I really, really enjoyed about this model here was that I'll, and you'll see it along the video, that a lot of the parts that were asked to glue together, you can glue from the interior of the model or a part of the model that's not going to be seen. So you don't get any gluey tide marks, even if you use a lot of it, it just looks really clean and it actually looks like it's a part of the tank as opposed to something that we added onto the tank, furthering the level of realism. So it doesn't look like a chunk of plastic once we're done painting and everything it looks like an actual serviceable tank and that's important because we want a nice foundation to build off of when we do come and prime and paint and post shade and weather as well as you can see here is exactly what i'm talking about this hatch was glueable from the underside of the upper hull so you don't see any gluey tide marks all the glue and adhesive comes from the inside and you are left with a nice clean product. As always with Tamiya kits as well, they fit together really, really well. This was the fit without glue. There's almost zero gaps in the hull. Obviously when you do glue it, you do get a little bead of melted plastic and well, it just looks that much better. This is an important part of buying, I wouldn't say a premium kit, but this is part of buying a kit where the manufacturer takes care in their fitting. So that way you don't have to do much cleanup or sanding and filling uh, when the time comes for it. Moving on to our drive sprocket here. Uh, this was a little bit more tedious than I originally thought it was going to be simply because there were a few more parts than I thought that made up these drive sprockets. And the fitting, they have these notches so that why they can't be misaligned. It was a big problem in earlier kits. So kits from like the 90s and early 2000s, they didn't have like these notches. So it was pretty much up to you to eyeball how the actual uh, spikes on the drive sprocket lined up and sometimes that would run you would run into issues when you would put tracks on where where the spikes latch into this the the tracks it wouldn't match up and it would come out not looking that great so you have the cap here for the interior of the drive sprocket so you don't see any of our real like inner workings and then you have another cover on top of it thankfully there were only two of these because if i had to let's say build an entire set of road wheels for this it would have been a, a lot more tedious than i really thought but again everything notches together and there's a perfect fit for mostly everything this is one of the very few 
spots where you had to glue on the outside. And as you can tell, we did get a little bit more glue on our small brush and it ended up on the drive sprocket. But thankfully, we prime the model so that way stuff like that ceases to exist. Now we're moving on to the road wheels and thankfully to me it has simplified their road wheel construction. Not that it was ever really a bad thing, but there's only three parts per road wheel plus a uh, plus a poly cap, I believe. And the construction of these were very easy. Again, notched, a little bit of Tamiya glue, put the notches together like Legos, press it together, just wait a few seconds, and then add the road wheel cap on it, which is also notched. Add some glue. We ended up being a little bit more careful uh, simply because we don't want a lot of gluey tide marks. Uh, just because, I mean, it's a personal thing, but I like the model looking as clean as possible when I'm ready to assemble it. Now we're moving on to the suspension arms as well. Uh, the suspension arms, very, very good fit. Overall, you get the idea. This is a very good kit. Um, I believe this was a rebox of an older kit with a new tooling as well as maybe some new parts. I would have to check the scale mates on that one. But overall, this model does go together very, very well. Um, and it comes together fairly quick because at first it just kind of looks like this box with some cool details. But then after you add a few of the upper hull details and the tracks, the road wheels and stuff like that, it actually starts to look and takes form pretty well. Now, this is kind of not a bad habit, but this is a creature of habit right here where I used the Tamiya thick cement on the idler wheel portion of this. And the reason why I used heavy cement is because usually for load bearing parts, you need a little bit of a stronger bond. I'm kind of used to using good rubber tracks or metal tracks. And a lot of those are built on tension as well. When you add tension to plastic, the weak spots are going to kind of suffer. So even though these are length and length, I still used heavy cement just to make sure that I had that bond here. And as always, tracks can be your favorite or least favorite part of the modeling experience, especially well, specifically for tank models. It's kind of what drove me away for doing tank models for a little while. Um, before I started this channel, I did a lot of airplane models and I stayed away from tanks because I knew tracks were gonna be fiddly and all that other stuff. But thankfully, again, a good kit, you get good construction of tracks. And I have to say, these are some of the easiest tracks that I've had to put on to a model, even though it appears as though I'm struggling here. I'm just trying to get the fit around the drive sprocket correctly. And as you could tell, those teeth from the drive sprocket are, are sticking through the track. And that is an issue that you would have ran into if they weren't notched and they weren't set up properly. And they're taking a little bit better form here. I do like um, how a lot of manufacturers are doing these long sections of pre-assembled track pieces. So as you can tell, that bottom rung was just one long section on the sprue. The section we put on the drive sprocket was actually about six or seven different links and glue them together. You wait for it to dry it just a little bit and you're still able to bend and contort the tracks around the drive sprocket as you desire. So you actually get a pretty good fit, but this saves a lot of time. And as you can tell, our tracks are looking mighty good here. It looks like they have weight to them and that's important with a, a good sag for the idler wheel as well. So this is what the tank looks like with the fenders on. And I feel like it just looked too boxy with the fenders on. I wanted to show off a lot of this track detail. So I'm going to do something that I never thought I would do 
ever. I was so afraid. I'm going to, well, I'm going to cut off the front of each bender. I originally started using a hobby knife, but as you can tell, it's not really going that well. And also I can't get a straight line for the hobby knife as well as either. So I think we're gonna have to use bigger tools here. If you have kids, now is the time to put them to bed because this is something you probably don't want to see, especially since you just spent money buying a kit and these kits are not cheap. Uh, it, I just never thought I would be doing this to a model and it's not because of an imperfection, it's because I wanted to add a little bit more detail by taking some parts off. This is just like a terrible, terrible surgery don't want to you don't want to see this and once you do it there's no coming back i uh, you could glue the fenders back on but i don't think they're gonna look as crisp or as clean but that's not what we're after we're tank modelers we don't go for crisp and clean so off with that fender as well now i did have a little bit of you could tell there it didn't cut straight so i used this nice set of sanding sponges from Madworks. Uh, they come in a set just like this. You can buy them pretty much anywhere online. And they come in varying grits, so that why, and they're labeled as well, so that why you can get a nice clean sanding experience here. Uh, this is some heavy grit sandpaper. You can tell by the amount of plastic dust we have coming off and how much cleaner it looks. I didn't film the whole sanding process because you pretty much get the idea. But here we go, we're going to put the fenders on now and we're going to glue them as well. And as you can tell, one second if I could just get this in there correctly. Now we have exposed tracks in the front. And looking at a lot of reference photos, I actually noticed that for one reason or another, KV crews didn't have the front portion of those fenders on there so a little bit more realistic and I didn't even notice until after I had done so now we're going to be adding these little braces from the fender onto the upper hull very good detail again some earlier kits um, these pieces like this would have to be balanced but here they have a nice little channel as well as a little tab for you to uh, apply it, the brace. And again, it just goes together like Legos. This is the beauty of modern day modeling that these kits have come so far and they're so technologically advanced. The quality of the plastic has gotten better and it just makes for an easier build experience and a lot more leisurely too. Again, just being very careful with our glue here. Now, this is something interesting that I haven't had to do in any other model, but I kind of appreciate the detail here. This turret ring, which has a nice little serrated gearing, uh, came in two parts. Usually it's either adhered already or molded into the model. Um, and I think I've only done one model before where it had a system like this and the serrated teeth actually looked pretty good um, but with this kit it just, I think it just looks really really great and it already has the pre-cut notches for the turret to settle into and just the way that it's constructed 
it just looks really really good and when it's placed on the model it just looks like it's part of the model i don't think this was really a necessary step for tamiya to take but it's one that i appreciate nonetheless because it does give you something to do tow cables so as you can tell they gave us rope and the issue with rope is that it's not very heavy so it could kind of fly away instead we're going to be using lead wire now lead wire very malleable yet it is strong enough where it has a decent amount of density and weight so we're going to cut it to the length of what was supposed to be the wire and even though it's not really braided i think unless you really really take a deep look at this model you're not going to really be able to tell the difference so we just kind of added our own little custom tow cables here we're going to rust these out so you're even going to be able to tell that it's not braided further and what's really cool about this is you get to drape it around whatever you like now obviously since we removed the front of the fenders we had to take some care to wrap it around some other stuff this is just a look at that rolled steel texture on some of the parts of the turret that Timmy has come out with i think that looks really good there's a big emphasis on creating your own rolled steel texture with glue and some Tamiya putty or putty in general uh, i think i'm gonna save that for kind of a test model so i can get an idea it looks fairly easy enough but thankfully in this kit i think we have enough detail not that we can get away with not doing it but that uh, it's not really a necessary step for us to do The construction of the upper hull and the main gun was very, very simple. I always like when modeling or constructing is a lot more simple um, for obvious reasons. And finally, we get to attach our main gun here which again if i didn't have glue it would not be an issue because this uh this gun went in there very easy and uh, it didn't really move at all uh, but i did still use glue because it's the right thing to do now we're just going to attach our gun cover which again very very good fit i think i'm going to do a tutorial or maybe not a tutorial but kind of a review of beginner kits or manufacturers that are very beginner friendly and where to go from there because trying to buy models is a is a sea of manufacturers and different model kits especially if they have the same tank for different eras or different types then you it's really a vast ocean where you know you may need to be pointed in the right direction i know i certainly needed to but everybody this is our constructed kv1 uh, i think it looks really really good there is a little bit of a lack of additives onto the side vendors and I was going to add some stuff from Value Gear, but I have some plans for this model in the weathering step that you'll see in a couple of weeks. As always guys, thank you for stopping by. If you could be so kind, just leave a comment. If you wanna see anything, comment on if you've made this tank, leave a like if you like the video, a dislike if you dislike the video, I'm very open to criticism and critiques for the videos. I'm always trying to better these as well as we move on. So yeah, just finish this video with some of the gratuitous shots of it on my little spinny boy. Thank you guys for stopping by. I'll see you next week where we paint this KV-1 in Russian 4BO, which is a very specific color. I'll see you guys next week.